Hi, I'm Aaron Rump, and today what I want to do is I want to go over how subprogramming works. The two subprogramming codes that we're going to be using today is going to be M97, and then I will also be using M98. So what's the difference between these two codes? So M97 will have the subroutine. Now when I say subroutine, when I activate my subprogram with M97, down in the bottom of my program, it's gonna go through a routine. So it's gonna go through motion. So for example, it's interpolating out a hole. So all the, all the code for interpolating the hole will be in the same program, okay? I'm not gonna be going to a different program because if you'll notice right here, I have my main program. I have an M97, a P123. But if you look down here, you'll notice that my N123, because P references to the N, okay? That's what it's looking for when it reads the P. But if you'll notice, it is below my M30. So that means that it will jump from M97 up here in the top of my program. It will jump below my N123 or wherever you have the program at. This is what I usually use for good, uh, good measure, good habit. So it jumps down to N123 and then it starts running, okay? The local sub program portion of the part, okay? The, the local, the local uh, subroutine is how to say it. So that hole that I'm doing, if I have a plate that's 100 inches by 50 inches and I gotta put a half inch hole interpolating it every two inches, well that'd be a really big program. Or with just a few lines, I can make that really big program really small because all of my code is in the interpolating of that hole. So what subprogramming does, it allows me to take a really big program and shrink it to be really small and condense. It also helps me to be able to use my hand G code programming uh, much more efficiently, okay? So in this example, what we're gonna do is I have a program called up that's gonna be doing some, uh, some holes, okay? And so, for example, on this one, it has the N123, and when it's done, it has M99 at the bottom. Well, what M99 does is once it's done with that hole, it jumps up to right here. Not the M97, it jumps up the line just below it, okay? That's where it's going to go to. So let's erase that. Got a good image on what's going on. So the way I'm going to show it to you guys is instead of doing a hole so far down, I'm actually gonna show you some tricoidal manual programming, okay? So just doing a slot. So how that's gonna work is I have my program called up here. And if you look over here, it says tricoidal slotting. I'm gonna use a three quarter end mill. It's gonna be a pretty big slot, okay? But it, just, it helps for the visual. So if you'll notice, I'll get past all my tool call ups. So right now, I am 100 thousandths below my Z0. So you can go down as far as you want, wherever you want to do, how long your fluid is, it's all circumstantial. But for this example, I am 100 thousandths below. Then, if you'll notice, I hit M97P123 and then L30. Okay, well that's kind of weird. So let's look at our, our 97 first. You'll notice that the P comes down, okay, it's looking for what? The N123. So it goes below my M30 to my N193, or 123. So the next thing I do is I go into incremental mode because all I'm gonna do is something small right there. It's kind of like a location for my programming. I'm gonna start right there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do G03, which is counterclockwise, I'm just going to go over, over, okay, I'm going to do that counterclockwise move, and then I'm going to move back to where I was. I'm going to move up a little bit, okay, so it's going to look really cool. It doesn't look really cool right now because nothing's moving, okay, so what I'll do is I'll hit reset, and when it comes down to here, it's going to read P123L30. So before we hit cycle start, what does the L do? So if you'll look right here, this is a small area of code. It's only gonna come, it's only gonna go down a hundred thousandths in Z, and it's gonna make one pass. Well, anyone, if you know what tricoidal is, you know that tricoidal is, keeps going, right? It's got a lot of little moves. Well, this right here has one move, unless 
I put an L30 on there, or an L, for the L represents looping, okay? So that means it will repeat this line of code however many times you tell it to do it. For, so for my example, I'm gonna move up 50 thousandths each time I take a helical move into my material, okay? So that's where the tricoidal comes there, because I'm going to take a helical, a helical, a helical, a helical, a helical. Okay, kind of annoying, but that's kind of that's exactly what's happening. So if my part, let's kind of see how big this is. So I'll take my calculator, move it over here so we can see it. If I'm going to go 50 thousandths, okay, times 30, that means I'm making a slot through my material that is one inch, 500 thousandths length, okay? So if I wanted to go six inches, I would just take six inches divided by however far up I need to go, and that's how many times my L is, okay? So it could be L of 1,000, it doesn't matter. It will take a tricoidal slot cut all the way through. So let's go ahead and watch this run, okay? I'm gonna hit reset, make sure I'm at the top of my program, go memory current commands, let's go to settings graphics, make sure it's playing. Just gonna hit cycle start, I'm kinda slow, because I want it to just run. So if you'll notice, it's running this sub program, one, two, three, and it's actually making a tricoidal pass through the material, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be a slot, okay? If you want to, you can get this going at an angle. You can have it be an outside cut towards taking off a little bit off the side. It's just kind of up to you, it's circumstantial. So, this is a M97 method, and if you'll notice, when this got done running those 30 times, there's 30 of them, we're not gonna count them, but they're there, it's going to come back up and go right, to, right back to my M30. So that program's done. So M97 is sub-programming where the sub-routine is in the same program. Okay? Remember that because now I'm going to switch my program up while I got it on here. I'm going to go to my M98. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Now my M98 Subprogram, okay, does the same thing. M98P, okay, the P is looking for what? Now, in this case, it's not looking for an N because my subprogram routine is not in the main program. So, if you'll notice, I have a main program, okay, which is 5432, and then I have another program, which is 234. That is my subprogram. So, they are two different programs, main program, sub program, two different programs. M97, my routine was in the same program. Now they're two different programs, okay? So that means M98P, the P is looking for a letter O, all right? This is gonna search all the way through to my program until I get to the letter O, and that's gonna be the start, okay? The start of a separate program, a sub-program, subroutine, however you wanna say it. So now, same thing, it's gonna do all my program right there. Now keep in mind, I can still use my L. Works exactly the same in the looping function, it's just how it works. But for this example, I'm not gonna use a loop, I'm gonna go do and talk, what we were talking about a second ago, where I have a number of holes that I have to do, and I'm gonna to go to that next position, and I'm gonna call up a subroutine. Next position, call up a subroutine. The next position, call up a subroutine. We're gonna kinda of see how that works right there. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Before we go, remember, at the end of your sub program, okay, this is a separate program in your machine, make sure it is not an M30. Make sure that it is an M99. That way the looping function will work, and if you don't use the looping function, it will, will return right here underneath the M98. Okay, so let's go back to our simulator, and then we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so what I have here, you'll have to forgive me on the G10s, I just put those in there so my machine wouldn't alarm out. I'll kind of scroll down so they're out of the way. Okay, so what I have here is I have my main program and then what I'm doing is I'm going to G54, X0, Y0. So once I get to my location where I want to be, I call up M98, 
P2000, okay? So I, then I go to G55, G56, G57. I'm going to all those zeros. Once I'm at that location, then I start my subroutine. Well, here's the question. What exactly is P2000? So you have to make sure before running the part, if you look up one time, O2000. If you don't have the subroutine called 2000, okay, it will not work. It will alarm out. It won't work properly because it cannot find it. It has to be able to find it. It's like a file. It's looking for the source, all right? So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. So if I look here, this is a subroutine where I am going 300 thousandths down in Z, but I'm going 25 thousandths at a time, okay? 25 thousandths at a time. So if I'm cutting real hard material, um, for this example, it's circumstantial because I'm just using it for reference. If I was using aluminum, I mean, all the Z depths could change. My eyes could change. Uh, G03 because I'm climb cutting inside of my hole. So that's why I have my G03. So, and that's what it is. That's all it is. And notice I have an M99 down here at the bottom. Okay. So all that looks good. Let's go back to my main program. This program, main program, there we go. So I hit cycle start. And you'll notice that I'm going through, I've went to my G54, my G55, my G56, and if you look here, it's calling up the 2000 program. So once it's all done, so I've gone here, I've gone to my locations, and I've done my P2000, which is my M98 sub program routine okay so that's how you do m97 m98 sub programming so you can utilize this for all kinds of applications uh, i hope you enjoyed it okay again my name is aaron runk thank you for watching